Morning all. Today I'm going to make up this kit and uh, it's a DC to DC converter. My favourite. But it's a converter with a difference because from a single 5 to 24 volt input it generates plus 12, minus 12, plus 5, minus 5 and plus 3.3. .3. Now all these voltages are regulated using linear regulators but the uh, initial positive and negative supplies, which I think are plus and minus 16 volts, come from a single switch mode converter chip. So this kit was kindly supplied by Banggood. Uh, that's my euphemism, which means that it was supplied free of charge. Uh, thank you very much to Banggood. Thanks very much to Seven. Seven is just brilliant. Um, okay, so this is SKU332561, but you probably won't find it on that. I think Banggood are moving away from SKUs and towards product IDs. So this one is 1022517. So I think I'm going to start with the inductors. Uh, there are three inductors, all uh, 330, which is 33 micro Henry's, I think. I'm going to start with those because they're the most scary because I think I might have some issues soldering these down onto the pads. So let's prepare the soldering iron, pour a bit of water in there and drop in today the yellow sponge with just a regular circular hole. I'm not sure how I'm going to get on uh, soldering these with my regular or my fairly low power 18 watt Antex iron, but I'll give it a go. It might be a case of just sort of tigging them into place and then uh, reflowing them with my larger iron later on. I'll see how it goes. I think I'm actually going to use some uh, flux on these pads. Is there any flux in here? Yeah, there is. I don't normally do this, I don't normally apply extra flux, but I'm so concerned about getting these things to take onto the pads um, that I'm going to use some extra flux. Uh, this pen actually I've had for about a year, it was given to me by a very generous chap who I haven't properly thanked for all the gifts he gave me. I must do that. It's one of my failings really. So let's flux up all these connections. Actually, it's probably only that bit on the end, isn't it? And uh, so I stand the best chance of getting these things to uh, solder onto the board. Right, let's try tigging on the first of these inductors. And if you're wondering, uh, the tigging technique, oh yeah, that's going very badly, was developed by Big Clive and uh, demonstrated to really rather good effect in his classic and seminal work, Dangerous 100 Watt LED Explodes. And I'll put a link to that uh, in the description below. So, like I say, oh, rogue capacitor. Like I say, I'm just tigging. Uh, let's get a bit of solder on there. These aren't really expertly made joints at this stage. We'll come back to those later with the reflow soldering iron. Actually, these aren't going on too badly. If I just put the iron in in that orientation first and then go in again, holding this with the iron on its side so it gets more sort of surface area. That's producing quite a nice joint. Look at that. That's not tigged at all. Now I've done two of the inductors, there is one more, but actually there are some diodes, well there's a diode here between the two inductors, I think that would be tricky to put on uh, with the in this third inductor in place. So I'm going to put the diodes on now. Now someone on the Banggood forums was saying, I'm not getting any negative voltages, um, and they actually put the diode on back to front. So what you want is the little bar line, where is it, there it is on this one and it's on the other end on that one. Uh, next to the slightly fattened up white line on here. That's the, uh, what would it be, the cathode end marker. So how do I get this uh, diode on? Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put a bit of solder on the iron. Now that will burn all the flux away, but that probably doesn't matter too much. I just want to place that and just kind of tig that so that that's held and that is now held. And then I can solder the back end and then the front end again and get that neatly soldered in place. Let's do that now. Let's turn it around for the back end. And because it's fixed onto the board, 
it shouldn't move around. Well, it's taken a while to tape, but I think that's taken. Or flow, I should say. Oh, it has lifted up a bit. Yeah, that's not as good as I would have hoped. Yeah, see that? It's kind of partially tombstoned and lifted up. Hmm. Might try a different technique for the next one. What I've always wanted to do was use some sort of technique for weighing it down. So I've put this brass weight, it's actually a cutting wheel off a circular cutter, and it's holding the diode down because it's the lifting up that's the real problem. And with that weighted down, I can put the first bit of solder on there, and then it should be uh, easy to do the other side without it lifting up. Let's see if it works. Yeah, I think that's worked. Um, it seems to be lying fairly flat to the board. It has turned itself round a bit. It's rotated a bit, but uh, yeah, I think that's okay. I'm gonna, I like this weighing technique because it's just quick. Right, there are the three inductors and the two diodes on. And I'm actually only going to half build this uh, today, probably. I'm not going to put any of the linear regulators on because I actually want to look at this um, split supply with a single switch mode uh, device circuit because it's actually quite intriguing. Right, let's get the uh, switch mode converter chip on there, which is an XL Semi XL6008. And then I'll take a look at the data sheet for this because I've been watching the videos of other people who've built this kit. Uh, Voltlog built this kit. Also Adam Welch, and Adam Welch pointed out something rather interesting in the uh, data sheet for this chip. So I'll just get that on and we'll have a look at that. So this chip is the XL6008. Uh, it says it's a wide 3.6 to 32 volt input voltage range. And it also says positive or negative output voltage programming with a single feedback pin. And also in that data sheet is this typical system application for a SEPIC inverting converter. And what this has got is the XL6008 and three inductors, but these three inductors are shown linked. Uh, they're shown almost like a transformer. The rest of the circuit is almost identical to the circuit for this power supply kit. Now, if you rummage around on the Banggood website, you'll find this schematic, and uh, it's almost identical to this application circuit. The only difference is that this device, the board I'm making, has three separate inductors. Here they are, L1, L2, L3. They're not coupled, which they are in this application note, and that kind of rang alarm bells. Right, I'm not going to get any power into this thing without some input connectors, so I'm going to do those next. Right, there are the two input connectors. Uh, now that fuse, that polyfuse, is a great big huge thing. Where is it? So this device is marked U300, but it's actually a 3 amp polyfuse. Right, the input LED and a 2K2 resistor. That's going to vary in brightness quite a lot between 5 volts in and 24 volts in, isn't it? And uh, that's as far as I'm going to go. I fitted all the remaining components, the electrolytic capacitors and this rather tall polyfuse. And what I'm going to do now is power this thing up. I think I'll just put my solar 12 volts, which is 12.9 at the moment, into the input and then measure on the output uh, what I'm getting in terms of positive and negative voltages from this switch mode part of the circuit. Right, I'm actually going to power this up now. I've got uh, 12 volts coming in from my solar system and we've got a red LED. Um, I'll just blue tack this down so it doesn't move around. And on the positive side of the circuit we have plus 16.2 volts. So let's just move that to the negative which is actually the tab on this one and we have minus 16.8 volts. So that appears to be working. So how does this circuit generate positive and negative voltages when there's only one switch mode converter? Well, XL Semi call this a SEPIC inverting converter, but actually this is a SEPIC CHUK converter. 
So how do I know this? Well, after Adam pointed out that uh, the application note from the Excel semi data sheet appears to use a transformer, and this circuit appears to use, or well, does use, three completely separate inductors, I thought I'd need to do a little bit of extra digging. Right, here's an application note um, from Analog Devices written by Kevin Tomsett. And it talks about an improved topology for creating split rails from a single input voltage. Now you can either do it with separate positive and negative switch mode converters, or you can use uh, flyback. But it says a better solution is the sepic chuck converter. Uh, the topology consists of an unregulated chuck converter tied to the same switching node as a regulated sepic converter. This combination results in two supplies that track each other very well under all but a 100% load mismatch. So this board is actually using a sepic chuck converter topology to generate the split rails. And uh, XL Semi aren't really acknowledging the work of Slobodan Chuk, who devised the negative part of this system. Now, Slobodan Chuk actually has his own YouTube channel, so this is a relatively recent topology. But this application note also has coupled inverters. Look at these dotted lines linking the inductors together. So what's that all about? Coupling the inductors reduces current ripple in the inductors by a factor of two. See the Chuck Middlebrook paper cited in the reference section. Ooh, uh, and we're getting some rather complicated equations cropping up. And uh, here, even though coupling the inductors has distinct advantages, it is undesirable for the coupling to be tight enough for there to be significant energy transfer through the core. Hmm. But there's nothing in this application note about using uncoupled inductors. However, in this EE Times article, which happens also to be by Kevin Tomsett of Analog Devices, and I should be okay with uh, copyright here because this is basically an advertorial, there is a little extra piece of information. It says here, this topology can be built with three single winding inductors or two coupled inductors or a custom 111 transformer or all the other uh, options. It says coupling the inductors reduces current ripple in the inductors by a factor of two. Well, now where have we read that before? This article is basically an almost identical copy of the analog devices application note, but we just get this little extra hint that you can use single in winding inductors if you want. You just won't quite get the benefits of coupled inductors. So there it is, that's how this works. It uses a sepic chuck topology with three uncoupled inductors. Um, you probably would get better performance if they were lightly coupled, but you don't want them too heavily coupled. And it generates uh, positive and negative rails using a single switch mode converter. So the rest of this uh, board is just linear regulators, capacitors, a couple of diodes with current limiting resistors and some connecting blocks. There's not really much point me filming that. So I don't think I will. I think I'll do that off camera. But there is one thing about this circuit that still bothers me. Why on the positive side have they put the regulators in parallel and on the negative side, they've put them in series? Now, often you can use this series regulator technique to spread the uh, heat dissipation across multiple devices. But on the positive side, we've got the 7805 and the 7812 both drawing their input voltage from this 16 volt common point. That means that on the 7805, we're dropping 11 volts. If you put a significant load on the plus five volts, this regulator is gonna get quite hot. Why didn't they put the 7805 after the 7812? I don't really know the answer to that. So I'm going to finish building this uh, board now on my own. Um, this is going to be very useful for my op amp circuits because I've got plus 12 and minus 12. There's also 5 volts on here and minus 5, which I probably won't use. Probably won't use 3.3 volts either. And these outputs should be quite good for audio because although 
this first part is switch mode, which will generate switching noise. Once it goes through the linear regulators, that noise should settle right down. And these outputs should be relatively quiet. I mean, maybe at some point in the future, I'll put them on the scope. But uh, I think that's it for now. I think this video is probably long enough. So, uh, cheerio.